A very pleasant good afternoon to you and welcome to the Ken Rampersad Show here on Island Zone Radio. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here, October the 4th, 2020. watching the Ken Rampersad Show here on Island Zone Radio and on Facebook Live. Please share the link to your friends and family. A very important topic we're going to talk about today. Understanding teenager behavior problem and tips of how to handle them. Well, good afternoon again and welcome to the Ken Rampersad Show here on Island Zone Radio. As I said today, we will, be, we will be talking about understanding teenager behavioral problem and tips how to handle them. Um, and one of the reasons why I brought up this topic today is because, you know what, over the past couple of months, I've talked to so many parents who's having problems with their teenager children and some of their adult children, especially with drugs and alcohol and so on. And today, my special guest is Anthony Singh. Um, I know most of you guys know him. He's a very intelligent young man. Hails all the way from uh, Amikatrina on the west coast of Demerara. He attended uh, St. Rose's High School in Guyana where he got a couple of subjects. I think it's eight subjects, O levels, right, Anthony? Eight uh, CXC. Eight CXC. And also he attended the University of Guyana and went to China to study for two months. Anthony, I know he has a very bright future in a bright future because you know what he wants to study politics he want to be in politics and i'm certainly sure that he will make a big difference in the world um so anthony again uh, welcome aboard to the ken rampersad show how are you doing today i'm all right and thanks again for having me and i was here with uh, two Sundays yeah, ago? two Sundays, yeah, ago. Two Sundays ago. ago yes and we talk about actually how parents how we can help um parents uh, dealing with these young children that's coming up, which is a kind of a difficult thing um, to do, especially here in the United States. You know, in Guyana, they, when I left Guyana about 30 years ago, there was not a lot of drugs and, and so on going on there. People are not doing drugs. But now um, I know that there are some drugs going on in Guyana. And here in the United States, you know, I'm a detox nurse, and so I my job site is in Queens, uh, South Ozone Park, and I get to see so many... Um, quite a few young Indian guys and um, more Indians and some female come to, I know one girl at one time was a teacher. She came because she was an alcoholic and I hear so many sad stories uh, coming out um, of our Guyanese population. So I said, you know what, let me bring up this conversation today and let, and we're going to talk about. Um, so we, we know that dealing with teenager is not an easy task. It is a tough is a tough thing but i want to start today by saying you know as a parent as a father of boys um i want to set the stage um how do i expect my boys to grow up to be good young men and one of the things i want to do anthony is that i want to be a role model for my boys <clears throat> i want to be there for my two boys and for three of them actually um as i said to be a good role model um, to understand them, to take care of them, to do a, a good job in bringing up them to be good husbands, to be good sons, um, to be good parents, to be a good neighbor. And what are some of the things that you are thinking about when you look at it? Um, in terms of you, Anthony, what are you looking for as a, 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 a son from a father? 
What are some of the qualities you're looking for? Uh, before I answer that, uh, let me just jump back a little bit just mm -hmm. to what you said, that um, you can remember your days as a teenager. There was right. nothing gay, and, and, and you did mention that. There wasn't the instance of um, so much drug usage and the access to drugs back in the day, but definitely things have changed from then to now. Absolutely. And things change, and I'm pretty sure the way, the, the way issues were dealt with with teenagers back in the day it's definitely changed now. Definitely the approach right. to dealing with um, teenage issues and problems, um, the, the the methods have definitely um, changed. Um, but to, to your question, it is what do I expect? Yes, from your father. I mean, a, a father figure like. Oh, definitely right off the bat. It is inherent that a father should first and foremost be a role model, apart from being a provider and all the other attributes that, come with fatherhood when it comes to father-son relationship being a role model is definitely there um apart from exerting uh fatherhood authority um it is incumbent and absolutely uh, and absolutely necessary for a father to be a friend also and you did mention in our last conversation two weeks ago that you have an open door policy with your sons who are one is already a teenager and one is yes. on the brink of becoming a teenager also so um uh, definitely, I think on the forefront, putting aside all of the other fatherhood attributes and duties when it comes to that kind of relationship, um, definitely um, being a role model and um, being a friend. That's good. And, you know, back then in Guyana, actually, I didn't have much say of um, how to, what to do and what not to do. The most important thing that our parents did, my parents did for me, is that they want me to be a good son to take my education that was the main focus but to be truthful i did not have a uh, um, i could not really go to my dad and say daddy like how my son have that option now to mm -hmm. sit down and say dad well you know this is what's going on i'm feeling this way and i'm feeling that way but i think parenting has really changed over it the has years it's definitely changed and i think um two weeks ago i did mention right here on the show that it's not a case where they they, they, they didn't have that care in in their heart back in the day but the issue was the way they were socialized to really express these kind of these kinds of emotions um like i said it's not a case where they didn't care or they didn't want to know what was going on but back in the day um masculinity manhood and fatherhood these these characters were defined so differently by society in Absolutely. That you, you have to exert uh, masculinity in a very macho way. And that kind of um, thing was being portrayed even in the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it created a barrier for, for crucial relationship then in terms of one-on-one um, -on -one talks and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, um, also, um, let's say to let's say hello to some of our viewers. I want to say thanks to all our viewers. Um, Zamina Saran, thank you very much. Shamir Rashid, thank you. Deuchin Samaru and Shamir Rashid, yes, they're on. Lalita Singh, DJ Free, uh, FR, thank you very much for watching. Um, let's see, we have Stan um, Sitaram, thanks for watching. Savitri, thank you very much. Um, Shankar, thank you. Jasoda Sugrim, thank you. Um, our good friend Chandralal, thanks for watching. Um, and she was saying that it's fabulous Sunday. God bless to, um, to all. Be safe. Absolutely. Linda Love. Love that name. Um, let's see. Uh, John Nemet from all the way from Suriname. Thank you very much for watching. watching. War Boss Andy, always a good supporter for this show and a great young man. Wish he was here. I would bring him on, on the stu in the studio too. Well, he is saying thank you so much. Um, Bidesi Vijay, thank you very much for watching. Sherry, thank you. Lisa Hansraj, thank you very much. Um, Kunji, uh, good to see you on. Uh, let's see, Budan, thanks for watching. Savitri, thank you. Um, Sangeeta, thank you very much for watching. Um, Roni Akula, Akulu, thank you very much for watching. Usha Ramatar, thank you very much. Seema Patel, thank you. Um, let me see uh, if, let me know, guys, if you are still hearing, if you can hear Anthony Rajiv Nandalal, thank you very much. Um, uh, John said I could hardly hear Anthony, so I turn his mic up. Our good friend uh, Maria, thanks for watching and listening also. 
Uh, Isirudin, thank you very much for watching. A good, great guy, too. I have to bring him on sometime on this show. Um, I was hoping to bring him in September, but it didn't happen. But good to have you on. Um, Sharon Ali, thank you very much. Watching from Orlando, Florida. Uh, she says, um, he said, watching from Florida, that's a good thing. I am so glad we get people from watching all over the country and from different parts of the world. Um, uh, Maria saying, good afternoon to you and welcome to our show. Norma Gaiden, thank you very much. Um, Devoti saying thank you. If you want to say hello to anybody, um, you go right ahead. Absolutely. I to know Maria who sent out greetings to me. Hello to you, Maria. Also. <laughs> well, Maria is a very special lady to this program. She's always supporting me and cheering me on on this show. So today we are talking about understanding teen behavior problem and tips how to handle them. And as I said today, I have a special guest. Um, and Anthony is no stranger to you guys. I know a lot of you guys have expressed your sentiment that you love him because he's such a brilliant guy. And yes, and when I was thinking of who do I bring on the show, I think no, the first name that came into mind was Anthony. And so let's start. Dealing, as I said, dealing with a teenager is not an easy. Um, no matter how good a parent you are and how great your relationship with your children is, you are likely to face parenting roadblocks when it comes to your teenager. Behavioral problems are common in teenagers, but you can deal with them with ease. If you are willing to put in the effort to understand what they are going through and what it is they need from you. So, Anthony, um, do you think um, they have, uh, good parents have bad children? Um, you will d definitely find cases like l like that. Um, it's not what I believe. Um, I believe that you will definitely find that <coughs> from good homes might um, come a delinquent teenager. And s certain behavior patterns, behavioral patterns, should be expected and we shouldn't get too overly excited over it and start with this whole condemning thing i mean it's a phase and a half to go through the um, right right days. so um while parents might definitely become frustrated um it's absolutely normal sometimes it's your approach to dealing and how you deal with the behavioral patterns and the different changes that you see coming from the individual right right and one of the thing they said um you know is my teenager behavior normal you know anthony um as i said i'm a detox nurse i work in right here in queens and a lot of times i know good parents um who's educated um doing great job here in new york making o over a hundred thousand dollars a year um came with their son who's doing drugs or um and i know i had one story where i heard that um one young Guyanese guy probably was 19 years old um <clears throat> even younger he um, catch somebody, and they, he and his friends, they put him in a car trunk and they lock him down there and they robbed him. So, so when you hear these things and you see your own Guyanese children um, get tied up in these kind of things, you, you one has to wonder. Mm -hmm. So it's um, often ask yourself this question, and you know, we are not alone. Parents could have difficulty understanding their own their own love little girl and boy and they want to know sometimes how come as good parents our children turn out to be bad and um sometimes it's not being bad but being a, a adolescent or a teenager can be a difficult time it is normal um, for teenagers to become moody because of the hormonal change they go through and we all know as young boys growing up you and i and as i know i'm from a different different era from you you know there is things that you want to go out and do and you know you want to get your friend and all these fancy things right um so that's that's important to know as parents what to expect and as we're bringing this conversation i know that um i hope that you guys can we can help change your mindset of how you look at things as this is a different era. While many teens appear to be of the same size as adults, they still do not have the same lung capacity, and this adds to the changes going on in their brains. Make them feel tired, which makes them feel tired easily. Your teenager may need several reminders to finish homework, to keep his or her room clean, or to finish simple chores. This may seem defiant and distant and even detached at times. What um, That is typical teen behavior, but it also seems abnormal to adults, making it difficult to differentiate between a normal teen behavior 
and behavior associated with mental illness. You know, one of the things, as, as I, you said earlier, one of my, my son is 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I keep talking to them about, and which is quite normal for teenagers, but I want them to do what's right. Y you know, Anthony, the, um, the clothes bin would be right next, right in the room. And they will take their clothes and they will throw it right outside of the bin. And I always get mad and I says, why you guys can't put this clothes inside of the bin? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. But, you know, and now that I'm reading and I'm studying these, this, this topic, <clears throat> I see it's quite a normal thing to do. And sometimes we do forget teenagers years. What's your take? Um, again, to piggyback on something which you said earlier, and it's crucially important, um, and while I mentioned that some behaviors are common, you did mention that a parent might approach you and ask you if this is normal behavior. There are cases when a child or, or a teenage person will exhibit behavioral patterns which are abnormal. Mm -hmm. And that's when you need to seek help. Not everything you're going to blame on old age and phase and hormones. Right. There's definitely some cases that are, that are not normal and um, you will definitely need some form of intervention in there. Like, for example, I mean, I don't think it is normal to lock somebody in a trunk and rob somebody. That is completely abnormal. <coughs> Absolutely. Right? Uh, you, you, you cannot simply justify such an act as being, oh, normal teenage behavior. It is not normal teenage behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, it is good that the parent reached out to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and question whether this is normal or not. I think right off the bat, one would say that it is not normal. That's right, that's right. And, and um, you um, mentioned also, uh, there are many factors that can contribute to a delinquent individual coming out from a good family. We've seen it many, many times. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with the family. You have to look at how the individual spends his time. What is he engaged in? Who are his friends? What's his clique made up of? What is the um, socialization of the community? What goes on in the school set? And so there are many contributing factors. And then we ask the question, how is it? But his parents are community leaders. Her, her parents are um, uh, church leaders or temple leaders mm -hmm. or mosque leaders. How, how, how is it that, you know, being coming from such a good home where values and standards and morals are held high and then this one child um, does not seem to sub subscribe to the values of the home so there are many different contributing factors okay so we'll have a dj um our dj uh dj bolt uh selector bolt is going to play a song for us and when we come back we will have a serious discussion about some common behavioral problem we have in teenagers while he's doing that uh, we have um the emoti i'm glad that you are um watching and um, Angela Moti, Ravi, um, thank you very much. Rohini Maharaj, thank you. Gita Chad, uh, Paul and Ragu, thank you very much. Lachman Bharat, thank you. Mac Ramdat, thank you very much. Um, it's good to have um, Bramdeo Hublal, thank you very much. Priya Prasad, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, again, um, Priya is one of the admin on the Ken Ram Prasad show. Um, Anjani Hari, thanks for watching. Um, Chandra Lal, she says, you are so right. Some of the kids born with a spoon in their mouth. Again, not all, but indulge in the dependency on their friends. And again, it shows or what goes on in, at home. Anthony, you are sharing a lot of important information. And that's why I bring Anthony here. He's a younger guy. He knows exactly what's going on. Um, Rita uh, Jagmohan, thank you very much for tuning in. Doreen po, uh, Ponsami, thanks for watching. Let's go. Debbie Debbie, uh, Sonny Roberts. Th oh, my neighbor. Thank you very much. I take a long time to pick up your name there, but good to have you on. Debbie, um, Rita Jagmohan, thanks. Adesh Shukran, thanks for watching. Um, I'm glad that Varshini Kedarnath is watching, you know, um, so, you know, Varshini lived with us and I, so I, I, I'm glad we're talking about these things so that she and Adit will get a little understanding of what's really going on. And sometimes when I'm tough with them and I tell them, you know, I need you to do right. so and so, I think they will get a good understanding of what I'm saying. Um, Kumini, uh, Munilal, thanks for watching. Samuel, Zarina Samuel, thanks for watching. I didn't see a while, Zarina, but glad you were on. Um, Priyas Pasad said, lack of discipline and maintaining a healthy relationship with your kid. Um, so let's go, DJ. Uh, we have um, Ryan, DJ Ryan, Jeffrey on. Thanks, my brother. 
Um, good to have you on. Let's go, DJ. Dora, uh, Dora, thanks for watching. Welcome back to the Ken Rampersad Show here on Island Zone Radio. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and please share the link. We have, let's see, we have Shelly Milo. Thanks for watching. Pamela Senior Ryan, thank you. Ruth Morrison, thank you very much. Natasha Ram. Hari, thank you. Shiv Kumar, thank you very much for watching. My beautiful wife, Gita Rampersad, is watching. Raj Paul is watching. Um, Shari Khan, Raj Paul, thank you. And I see Maria said, I got full with the song at the beginning. Um, Patrick Jack, thanks for watching. Andy Prasad, thank you very much for watching. Um, Sokdeo, thanks for watching. Takur Rupnarain, thank you for watching. Christine, Christina, thank you very much for watching. Shairun Ali, thanks for watching from Orlando, Florida. Sokdeo Kim, that thanks for watching. And um, Priya saying big up to the kids in the house. Omade Samuel, thanks for watching. Sunita Bridgelal, thank you. Bibi Shadig, thanks for watching. And uh, Shirley Chawramutu, thanks for watching. Nanda, thanks for watching. It's good to have you on. Usha Ali, thank you very much. Dayal Bachin, thank you very much for watching. Yvette uh, Rudolph, thank you very much for watching. Lalita Devi Paul, thanks for watching. And um, again, my good friend Dio Moti, thanks for watching. Um, Gita Chatter Paul, thank you. And Ragu, thank you. So here it is some common problem that we have with teenagers um, behavioral issue in adolescent. Um, for the ease of understanding, common teenager behavior have been categorized into risky and difficult teenage behavior. And when we talk about risky behavior in teenagers, 
um, teenager behavior, which can lead to self-harm or physical and psychological damage are considered risky behavior. Um, keeping a close eye on your child can help you curb the issue before it blow out of proportion. And let's talk about the, the, the last piece here with keep your close eye on your child. I really do believe that as parents, um, we need to keep uh, a close eye on our children. We never know what they're doing, especially here in the United States, where you have both parents working and the child is home a lot of times by themselves. What's your take? Um, I think it is difficult to out of the blue try to establish a, a relationship, especially when the child is already at a place where the 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 risky behavior has already been inculcated and enveloped the person. For for a parent to be effective when that period comes, a line of communication and a relationship should have already been established from childhood days. Mm -hmm. Imagine you coming to me now in my phase of delinquency and rebellion and what's not. Very unlikely I'm going to open up to you. I would more turn to my friends. Mm -hmm. You understand? And better yet, if the clique of friends are just as <laughs> I am. Right. Right? And so um, it boils down again the importance of establishing a, a relationship and a channel of communication at a very young age. Um, it It is going to be the period where if that channel isn't there, more or less, the parent trying to keep an eye would be met with gross resistance and rebellion. Mm -hmm. And that's when it is going to become very hard and frustrating for the parent. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you um, cope with that? How do you cope with that? I don't know if the parent would want to bring in professional help, getting the child to accept and become receptive to professional help is another issue by itself. So from the get-go, um, a, a line of communication, um, a relationship should, should, should be developed early. On the plus side, on the plus side, um, on the plus side, we are seeing that in these days, um, parents um, are more integrated with their children. They play a more integral, active role, mm -hmm. both for mother and mothers and fathers and so more or less when the teenage years come i don't foresee the young parents having that kind of problem now. yes teen, teens are increasingly indulging in alcohol drugs and sex long before they reach the legal age don't be surprised if you find that your 15 or 16 year old has started to drink socially and is sexually active if you find that your child friends and classmates are also indulging in such activities, then it's safe to assume, and we are saying safe to assume, that that behavior um, is normal and not a physical and mental illness. Uh, it's also easy to get addicted to these vices. Substance abuse can also lead to depression, liver failure, and other chronic disease. Alcohol and drug addiction may be difficult to recover from. And um, as a detox nurse, I have to tell you guys that um, it is so difficult to, if you start drugs, to get off of it. And I've seen so many people, I've dealt with so many patients who um, started drugs when they were 14, 15 years old. To see at this time, like up 50, 60 years after, that they are still into drugs and it's hard to to um, get them to stop. And that's one of the reasons what I always tell people and always tell my friends, you know what, please, by all means, tell your children, don't start doing drugs. That when you start with drugs, it's like a monkey on your back all the time until you might die. You may never win the battle. There are some people who I found out that they really, um, they stop doing drugs, but it's a constant battle every day that they will have to go to meetings and so on to stop so um you know we have to encourage our children our friends to say no to drugs i believe an effective <coughs> way in approaching this is not just saying don't do it because curiosity will kick in why should i not do it mm -hmm. right um it puts you at an advantage where you can explain why not to do it you can show images you'll know of many stories of persons who have ventured into the avenue of um drug consumption and alcohol consumption where alcohol becomes alcoholism and they 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 become addicts to um these these kind of things drugs and alcohol and what's not so we can tell of many stories where they they never 
be, being engaged in such activities on a risky level don't end too well. Mm -hmm. You're in that field. Mm -hmm. A day is going to come when you can speak from first-hand experience mm -hmm. all the encounters that you had on the job with regards to such persons using these <coughs> things, what the repercussions were, what were the consequences, and how hard it is when you become an addict to really move away from that kind of lifestyle. You know, I, I do interview patients on a daily basis, and I was surprised. Um, I met uh, someone who started drinking at eight years old. I've met people who have ha started having sex at 10 years old, and I always wonder in my mind, do they really know what they're doing? You know what I'm saying? And it, it could end to a lot of problems, which we will talk about. You know, as a parent, do not approve of these kind of activities. Here are some of the solutions that we're going to talk about. Do not approve your kids if they start having sex, they're doing drugs and these things. But at the same time, do not panic and react instantly. Kids could indulge in alcohol early on due to violence or abuse at home. <clears throat> and one thing I have to advise parents is that, as we have talked about a couple of weeks ago, you know, children sometimes... What they see the parents do, they want to do. They see the daddy beating up mommy, they want to start do, get, do the, the same, same thing. Stuff, yeah. So like we said earlier, you want to start um, change. Be the change that you want to see mm -hmm. in your children especially. Yep. Don't um, get into violence. Don't beat your wife. Don't um, beat your kids. Because you know a lot of times, I think you spoke about it too, is that when you um, beat your kids, they will feel that that's the um, good thing to do. Yeah, that's that's <coughs> the, the proper and accepted way to deal with an issue. And we even went on to say it's an introduction to violence by itself. That's right. And, and due to the violence and abuse at home, children really do act out at school. And when you see, and a lot of times, that's why when you see children go to school and they misbehave that's why they want to see the, the teachers want to see the parents to really find out what's going on and what's causing the pressure also children these days especially here in the united states they go through a lot of peer pressure they go to school they see their friends doing things they want to do as young as um nine and ten years old right absolutely absolutely um young people will come under a lot of pressure and um what parents need to understand it is drastically and far different by leaps and bounds from when they were kids and when they were young people to now. It's a different reality mm -hmm. and they need to accept that. I've seen so many times where parents approach issues of the day as though it's an existing issue or, or, or handle it as though it was something that was existing far back then or, or something. It is different. It is absolutely different now. And so, therefore, the approach has to be different if you're going to be effective. And, you know, um, to be, I, I had to I smile just now because I see John said, Ken, sometimes mommy beat up daddy and daughters are watching. Absolutely. Um, also, one of the most effective ways to prevent alcohol or drug abuse is to talk about it. And it's a true thing. And like I said before, Anthony, I have Ken and Kevin here and I have... Um, uh, the other kids and i always tell them please don't get involved in alcohol and drugs and and having sex early which is you know as little boys we all want to have sex we want to feel good and so on right right but hormones <coughs> the, the, the the hormones are so powerful uh, you're in the medical field you you understand more than me how overpowering <laughs> hormones can be and when i worked at the ministry as an officer there i one of the things we we, we had to say to young boys and men is that Especially men in, in, in husband and wife relationship, when the wife would reach a certain age, menopause, and she starts nagging out or lashing out, mm -hmm. many times it's, it's the hormones having an overpowering effect, and the man does not realize it, and then he bursts out into anger and retaliation and what's not. So um, hormones definitely um, play a factor. It can be an overpowering factor also. And so, <coughs> likewise, in the teenage age, um, parents need to be cognizant of the same. Absolutely. And um, one of the effective ways to prevent alcoholism, to, uh, alcohol or um, drugs and so on, is to talk to your teenager. And when you talk to them, we want to talk to our children in a calm way and explain to them some of the things that could happen after they drink and they start doing drugs. For example, like me, I would say that, you know what, don't start drinking because you can end up being an alcoholic. Don't start drugs because you may not be able to end that episode that you're going through until right. you're dead, right? Mm -hmm. 
don't start to go and have sex when you don't know how to protect yourself from sex STDs. <clears throat> oh yeah, and those kind of talks are absolutely important, especially along the line of um unprotected sex and STIs and all of these kind of things. They're of crucial importance. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, Anthony, you you've been around um, in Queens, and I I've been driving around, and I would see some little girl like sixteen years old with bigger guys and going out and you know a lot of things that could go on you could get a lot of stds and so on so one has to be very careful and that's why it's important as parents we talk to our children and not talk down to them let mm -hmm. them know that you know what drugs is no good alcohol is no mm -hmm. good um <clears throat> also sex is no good which i always say that you know sex is good yes but yeah. it, there is a time and a place for that absolutely um it's good <coughs> that you um say that and again, it underscores the need for a parent-child relationship where you can talk about all these kind of things because no doubt children are in school, they hang out with friends or what's not. What are you going to say to them? Oh, don't have friends? Do not socialize? You're creating a monster. Socialization helps to develop an individual. But it's best they come to you and get certain information from you because friends can give you <laughs> a <laughs> whole different be. definition about stuff. And friends are going to put things over in a more enticing way that would cause you to become curious. You'd want to experiment because of the words they use, the way they express these things in such a nice fashion. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, and it's not to gloat. I've never done weed before, and mm -hmm. I will never do it. And it's not to say, if you saw my friends in Guyana, you would wonder. I would be sitting here, and my friend would be rolling his joint right there. Really? And countless times I would be offered, many, 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 many times. Mm -hmm. But I have developed certain principles and values for myself. Right. I want to touch on that a little bit also. The home should have certain principles and values and standards mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that mother and father establishes and they live by. Mm -hmm. And children are introduced to it also. And so they know that, oh, our family doesn't stand for this. My mother and father, they don't stand for this. Faith also um, play an integral role. Because two weeks ago, we didn't get to talk about this, but I did mention it to you after the show, where we were raised in a Christian home, <coughs> and every faith brings something good to the table. Every faith prides itself on good morality and mm -hmm. standards and values and being upright people in society and in the community. So if a child is raised in such an environment, it is good. It helps you to beat back the forces out there, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry for saying forces, but we we are bombarded with different things when we go out there in schools, in our colleges, with our friends, and what's not. But imagine being nurtured for all these years with good principles. You are well grounded in your principles, and it is and it is what caused me as an individual. And I I I I want to shy away from using myself as a, as an example. But uh, and again, not to gloat, but no, you can talk about yourself. That's I have yeah. been able to say no on so many, many, many countless occasions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? While still maintaining my friends, yeah, they might want to call you this or um, ca call you that, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to be strong enough <laughs> to, to know that this is not who you are, this is not what you want to do. I'm telling you the amount of things that I was offered to, to do or to experiment on so many countless occasions, but. It's how I was raised as a young man, the values and principles <coughs> that I was raised by. Um, and it helped me through a whole lot. Even to this day, to this day, I'm an adult, but I still have my boundaries. That's right. To this day, I still have my um, boundaries. And as an adult, an independent adult, you're free to do whatever you want. Right, right. But I am well guided by these principles that I was raised and, by. And, you know, one of the good things with Anthony, I have to tell you, you know, I taught Anthony Mother Red Cross back for a state and home nursing back in Guyana. That's oh, many yeah, you, you definitely know <coughs> that it's not just from my home, but my right. parents were raised with the same principles Exactly. Also. So I, I taught his mother, and I used to go to his grandmother house many, many years ago. So I look at Anthony as my son, and I he's a special guy to me. You know, I when I met him here in the United States, I said, listen, my home is like your home. You can come here anytime. Yeah, you did. You always yes. say that to um, me and extended your Because home. of his mother. And, and I didn't know his father that much. I just know his father a little bit um, because he was in a band and so on. But I've always extended this to 
to Anthony that he can come here anytime. If he wants some food, he can come. You know, he wants to spend a night. That's fine because I know his mother in Ghana. And what I like about Anthony is that because he's here by himself, but he's really living up the life, and that's a, a great thing. So we have a great guy here um, that's giving us some advice. Also, um, when we are talking to our kids, we don't want to be talk to them in a uh, like we accusing them of thing. Um, when you bring up this is kind of issue, um, we want to try to be friendly. Children are also at the risk of taking alcohol without without their knowledge, and sometimes teens worry that not having alcohol or drug is uncool and we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. in a minute yeah. and maybe under peer pressure to say yes to um to avoid that teach your kids early on like your parents did on how to say no to alcohol and drugs when someone offers it to them experts also say that teens who eat dinner regularly with their parents participate in after school activities and are, are not allowed to wander around late at night have a um, significantly lower risk of becoming involved in the situation. So here it is, we are talking that it's good to have family dinner where you sit down and you talk about things. Um, you know, it's a good thing, right? And then we were talking just now about um, saying no when your friends come and said, you know, try this joint. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So, so that you said no a lot of times. Oh, many, 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 many times. And of course, you're um, a true friend. A true friend will not stop being your friend because you stood up for something that you believe in. If in the event, this is to every young person watching, if your friends continue to taunt you because you, because you stand firm grounds on your principles, they are not true friends. They are not true friends. They are there to lead you astray, and when <coughs> the tire hits the road, they're going to scatter, as we say in Guyana, yeah. and, you, and you're left to fend <coughs> for your own. You are left to fight the battle on your own. You know, Anthony, as, as you're saying that... Um you know that you know i was called many names because i, w I was um, i wouldn't drink i would, I would not definitely smoke. share my my story with <coughs> with um that also as we progress because i believe it's good i'm a firm believer in when you can um relate to people when people can relate to you because you've walked the road you've been there and you're able to negotiate the channels and come through successfully mm -hmm. people identify with you and especially someone going through the same thing they want to learn how is it you were able to negotiate these waters right. and come out successfully so 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 definitely you you were called names oh or people say oh you auntie man you know i drink um Absolutely. you gal you know i drink you all sorts and, of and that's a sad thing that to, it to is grow very up in sad. that right and you know what it springs from? It springs from back in the day where masculinity again. You see, it always <clears> comes back to the social construct of, of society, the way you were socialized, where being a man, you, you are defined, your, your manhood and your masculinity is defined by the way you live, the things you do, whether you smoke, you fight, you what's not. It's called machoism, and it's a distorted sense of masculinity, and it is absolutely wrong. Thank God we are moving away from that. And so you're right, because people were nurtured with this very wrong and misconstrued idea of what being a man is, when they see you not engaging in those things that we refer to as being very toxic now, mm -hmm. right? They tend to call you all of these kinds of things. Right, right, right. And I was recipient of same in my high school. Really? Because of the principles that I stood for, right? I, they used to call me pastor. Uh -huh. And so many other names, many, many other names. And it was hard coming through school right. um, like that. But thank God I, I had one friend. She's a pastor's daughter. Um, but we, we, we went through high, high school together and she was a very good friend. Oh, okay. um, the flip side to that, and I wish a, a, a young people looking would, would really adhere to this. <coughs> the flip side to that is that I stood focused on my books. I mean, not every time I liked class, you know, we would all go through that phase. Right, right. But I, I realized that an education is, is important, and that was my focus. But on a day like today, the same people who used to bully me in, and now bullyism come in all different forms. I don't right, know if you'll right. touch on that mm -hmm. later on. <coughs> but the same people who I received bullying from. They talked to me because of where I was able to come in life. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so they respect me tremendously, I'm telling you that. Good, On a day good. like today, my bullies respect me tremendously. Have I forgiven them? Absolutely. We were kids. We were, we were, we were stupid back then. Right, right, right. right? Um, but it is the focus that I kept. And um, I was able to, to, to move on in, in, in life and, and really achieve. But the very people back in the day who used to taunt and call all sorts of names, 
to this day, up to this morning, I was chatting with with uh, one of them, and every single one of them I speak to today on a day like today. Good for you. But <coughs> where are they today, and where am I? Absolutely, that's the only defining factor. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, uh, we got so much things to talk about, but um, that's why you're not hearing a lot of music. Please forgive me today because we were supposed to talk about this two weeks ago, and we didn't get to do it. And you know, um, l- let's see. Um, Somebody made a comment here um, where you should go to school. Um, Savitri said that this kid needs to go to school and give speeches. And, and that's why um, we are talking today. And Savitri, if you could encourage um, your friends and please share the page, share what we are talking about um, so that people can hear this message. I see my sister Naomi Ramdas is watching. Um, Savitri, thank you very much for your comment. Let, let's, um, Savitri, thanks very much. We are keeping you in our prayers, son. Thank you. Natasha Ram, thank you. Um, Sandra, thank you very much. Uh, let's see who we have. Uh, Ricky, thank you very much. Sharda Ramda, thank you very much. Romila um, Bykoff, thank you. Minnie McCoy, thank you. Sandy Sogdeo, thank you. Bibi Farida Rashid, thank you very much. Um, let's see who else we have. Priya is saying, a typical example, as Anthony is saying, not every single kid will do the same as those other kids. As a parent, they need to be conscious not to compare their kids. Absolutely. Oh, that's a very good point. We also. don't want to compare. And yeah. we're going to talk about that mm-hmm. because I know you have three, two other brothers, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Ram here, Alal, thank you very much watch, for watching. He's in Canada. Roy Chan, thank you very much for watching. Um, Mohammed, uh, Narisha, Mohammed, thank you very much for watching. Um, Nanko, Thank you, Roy Chan, Davy Prasad, Chandra uh, uh, Ansa. Let's see, we have Sharda Budu watching all the way from Wisconsin. Thank you. Ganga, Patricia Ganga, thanks for watching. Etwaru, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Pulmati Joseph, thanks. Golin Hari, thank you. Um, John is saying you, well, you did a well said, Anthony. N- uh, Miss Neela Pawaru, thanks for watching. I know she stands all for what is good and always um, helping out uh, people in our community. Also, um, we know that increased use of communication device we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. and social media. According to Pew Research Center, 73% of teenagers had access to smartphone in 2015, and more than 92% logged into social media every day using their smartphone. Use of communication devices and social media is not a bad thing. In fact, it's necessary for teens to have a mobile phone so that parents can keep track of their whereabouts. However, the use of these devices can turn into an addition, uh, addiction and affect your kid's lifestyle and attitude. Also, their school yeah, grades. That's a very salient. Um, both we, points coming out there are very important. Yeah, we will, we will discuss this in just one second. Social media can open doors for strangers who may want to take advantage or uh, undue advantage of your kids those naive teenagers, which can be dangerous. Which, what do you want to say? Um, definitely both points coming out there are very salient and true points. Um, we cannot shy away from the reality that we live in a day of technology and social media. And um, <coughs> even to the oldest person Have a, yes. has a cell phone and they're on social media. I was surprised where... My father has social media. <laughs> I mean, he was watching oh, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. <laughs> and so, if the older folks are going to be on social media, much less. I got, pati- I got patients who are nearly 80 years old. And there you go. <laughs> and they have a phone. But I let's... chat with my boss on WhatsApp ever so often. Yeah, and yeah. so, everybody utilizes these mediums that are there. They're... For me, my, my, my social media, I read so many news on my Facebook. Me too. I do the same thing. I, I hardly ever watch news now. I read most of my news. Me too. For young people, they will keep tap on what their friends are doing. It's a medium where they communicate with, with each other. Look at the role that social media plays now in the area of education. Technology and um, all of these things with schools, uh, online schooling or what's that. So it is definitely good. It definitely has its um, ups and and positives. The, the 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 issue of keeping contact with with your child and a child keeping contact with you. <coughs> you never know when something is going to go wrong. You know, and when I think about that, Anthony, I was thinking about nine eleven. Um, so I, I'm even to with schools probably bombing school and so on. I that's why I give my boys phones that in case anything they could always call me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> And then there's the flip side also. Um, I, I I want to share a story, but then I don't want to. 
and it very well and much has to do with technology and social media, but it's along the line of it's very heinous, so I'm not going to share it. Um, but there are people out there who utilize these channels for very mean and atrocious things. And so um, if your child is at a very young age, and not every person has the maturity, especially a, a, a young person now coming into the, the real world, a child is still very innocent mm -hmm. to the evils of this world. Mm -hmm. And so... A child having a, f uh, a phone that has access to the internet and all of these things for the right purposes will approach all of these things with the same kind of innocence until an adult steps in who has who was been through all of these things, who knows of the ills out there and sits down and say, well, you know what, you have this phone, X, Y, or Z, and not every single thing. Or now they, they have different, fa like all these... Um, these internet service providers and uh, cell service providers and what's not, they, they have different protection services, family plans that, mm -hmm. that brings with it certain kind of um, services and what's not to, to protect the young, the vulnerable, right. also, and, what, and the innocent. What I want to talk about too is that because of cell phone, do you know how much guys um, prey on young children, young girls, young boys, sending them nude pictures and all these things? So one has to be very careful. As parents, we have to be very careful. We need to, and how are we going to solve these problems? Not giving your teenager a mobile phone or completely cutting off them on social media access is actually not a good idea. Nah. Um, again, communication. I mean, it's amazing how everything boils down back to these fundamental principles mm -hmm. or things that should have been inculcated for from a very long time. So... It boils down back again to communication, having a line of communication with the child, having a good relationship with with with, with the child. Or you know, it is also common for teens to own a cell phone. That we all know that most mm -hmm. teens have them, but get them one, but has strict rules about what they use it for, monitor how they use the internet, keep a tab on their browsing history, and what we are saying, uh, you can go and check where they which site they visit. If possible, have an open arrangement about it so that you don't have to check on them behind their backs because that's a trust issue too. Uh -huh. Also, encourage them to talk about what they're doing online by being friendly and open to their ideas and interests. Another way to deal with this issue is to have a restriction on time spent on texting and calling their friends mm -hmm. on other social media when they are at home. You may also download apps, uh, which I don't know about all of these things really, that enables you to turn to the internet access off for a certain um, device or allow you to put time limits on the device that your teenager has access to. Right? There are so many things that I would want to say for, 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 for those parents who... Um, may not know about all of these things, you can definitely, you got Spectrum, you got Verizon, and I'm pretty sure your internet service provider will be able to assist you if you were to want to go down that line. Yeah, let's get another uh, a song for you guys, um, and then maybe we'll come back with our discussion. Um, I know uh, some of you might be getting boring, but um, it's, it's something very important we're talking about, um, young children. How do we as parents deal with all these kind of things? I see your uncle uh, Amos is watching. Amos. So good afternoon and thanks guys for watching. Let's go DJ. Chalo, modi
Welcome back to the Ken Ram Prasad Show. Glad you guys are really enjoying the songs. And I'm talking to a very brilliant young man here, Anthony Singh, who hails all the way from Guyana, went to St. Rose's High School, University of Guyana, and then he went and do uh, some studies in China. So let's continue our discussion. We have children, and we know that um, they go through different modes. Um, and we all know that growing up, we do go through, we are not always in, good, in a good mood, okay? And as parents, we need to realize that mood swings are common in teenagers, with them being happy sometimes and cranky the other times. Anything and everything can set them off, and they can go on endless tirades of how unfair you are. I was sometimes, I, I tell my parents that, you know, you guys are unfair with me, whatever it is, you know. Mood swings can also indicate depression sometimes. Um, parents can distinguish between teen rebellion, mood swings, and depression by considering the severity and duration of the mood swing and the dominions that are affected by their mood swings. And, you know, Anthony, um, just briefly, we all do go through mood swings in life our ch ch as a child growing up. It's sometimes so sometimes we are not in good mood. Sometimes we are in bad mood. And the, 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 the good thing that I think parents now are trying to understand us more than when we were kids growing up. What kind of mood you is, you got to do whatever you have to do. You know what I'm saying? If you don't feel like doing something, you have to do it. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to say. I about think I, I, <coughs> I, I really like that that um bit that that you shared there, and I hadn't thought of it, but but it makes profound sense in that while you keep an eye out and it falls within that bracket, keeping an eye on the child, you you're basically monitoring the behavior pattern. But you mentioned um, a word there, duration, mm -hmm. prolonged periods of the of an uh, of, of depression. And I can remember once I was in Guyana, I had to draft a program for the ministry on suicide. And that was one of the calling signs. Mm -hmm. Prolonged um, depression. Um, it's one of the warning signs of someone contemplating suicide. So I, l I love that term, um, duration. Whether it's um, whether they, they behave in cranky or whether they're happy or dep especially in the area of depression. If it's prolonged, <coughs> uh, you need to monitor it closely. Well, the thing is that if someone is sad for like a week or two, it's it's not a problem. But if that prolongs, as we said, for over two weeks or whatever it is, right. one has to go. The parents have to find out what's really going on mm -hmm. with that relationship, mm -hmm. and if there's any help that they could do um, for their child, they need to do. And the common mistake that parents do um, is to trivialize you know, what their teen is going through. And a lot of times, parents don't believe their children what they're saying. Right. And sometimes they can, you know, what say, oh, that's a small thing, man, don't worry about it. You may feel that your child is overreacting, but that will also, um, that will only make them feel misunderstood. That can shut them off completely. And one of the things that as parents we don't want to do with our children is to shut them off right. and let them feel that they don't have a voice, right? I totally <coughs> agree. You do not see the issues that your children go through as being trivial. And then you will say, oh, we went through the same thing. Um, the child's experience might definitely not be the same as yours. It will not be the same as yours. And you don't know the scope at which the child is feeling the blunt of whatever he or she is going through. And you may never be able to know. I can't know what you're feeling. I mm -hmm. can't know what you're going through. So don't treat it as trivial. Don't treat it as a joke. Don't think to yourself that, oh, I was going through the same phase and, oh, now he's going through it. Um, everyone's, everyone's experience is unique. Mm -hmm. And so um, while, while I might have gone through something or while I might have been through a phase when I get a child, I know that I might say to myself, well, you know, well, I went through the same phase too, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. his experiences will be very unique to him and it they they might definitely the experience or the phase might definitely need my intervention as a parent so yeah don't don't take it as a joke or as being trivial that's right rather than brushing them off um, of their reaction try to listen to them and a good way to listen to people is to be empathetic right you want to put yourself in that person's position mm -hmm. 
to understand what they are going through. Let them talk about it, and you may even be able to um, lead them to realize that this is the drama that doesn't work the time of the day. If you feel that there is genuine mental health concern, then take the teen to a mental health um, professional, mm -hmm. and that's where you had said earlier. If you see that over two weeks that this is not going away, what you need to do as a parent is to go and, and talk to a mental health professional who can really help you to understand what's going on with your teen. Um, also, let's talk a little bit about aggression. As we said, I'm sorry today, there would not be a lot of music because there is so much we need, really need to talk about. Um, as I said, one of the reasons why I bring this topic up is that for a couple of months, a couple of weeks, I've been hearing so many problems with parents um, and some people asking me, can you please address this issue with us a little bit? And that's why I, I reach out. I think would be very awesome. At the end of the program, before we close, you are more of fait with the different um, offices and agencies here in, in New York State that um, that offer services mm -hmm. to young people going through problems. It, it would be good if you can, you know, name some of them at least mm -hmm. so that if someone watching is experiencing the same situation, they know who to reach out to or maybe they can contact you personally and you refer them to an office. Well, you know, I always, you know, uh, what I say about my life, I am I'm doing this show because um, I really want to see our people live a better life um, to get help. There is help out there. You don't have to suffer alone. Um, and I do, I do. A lot of people do reach out to me during the week, and I talk to them. I, I listen to them. I try to guide them where I can. And also, I know that um, there is, you know, the for, if you have depression, one of the first place you can start with is your doctor. You can talk to your doctor. Your doctor can advise you where to go. Also, uh, Anthony, I'm glad you say that. You can talk to your pastor, to your preacher, to Absolutely. your Mulvey, yeah. and that's the first thing you can do to start help. If you see that your children are not really helping, um, listening to what you have to say, start with your pastor or your preacher. You see know, how our parents did the um, same thing because we we grew up, and you know how Anna Catherine is. Right. You have the temple right there, you right. have the mosque, and you have the, the church. So the entire area was faith-based, regardless mm -hmm. of your religion. And so from time to time, you, you had so many religious leaders in the community. Mm -hmm. And so you respect them, you're scared of them, and then your parents might go tell the pastor that this might be even so. So, mm -hmm. so you, you were nurtured in, in, in such a way where you, 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 you try as hard as possible to live with the principles <laughs> that you were raised by because you don't want to offend anybody right. or anything because Sunday have to go to church. That's right. Also, <laughs> a, a good way you can do things, you know, sometimes if your parents have a friend that's, that they trust and um, who is educated and who can guide these children in a, in a good way, like, for example, if somebody has, like, if I, my son misbehaving, I can call you, Anthony, and say, you know what, here it is. Um, can you help me talk to this boy? I've had many, many, <coughs> many parents who have um, reached out to me in, in that area, uh, actually, um, just last week, I was told um, somebody reached out to me. Is like, yo, Steve, um, I want you to be a mentor to this young person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, going to college but having some issues at home with studies and whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so so definitely, um, we we all serve each other in some way or or, or, or form. Yeah. Um, you you were mentioning not comparing your arm um, child um, right, right. to and, and and parents have failed i think sometimes have failed in this area yes. where they begin to compare their yes. child to somebody else mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you don't do that you absolutely every yeah. child is unique they 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 come with their own positives they come with their own negatives mm -hmm. and they 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 they're a whole package and that package is very unique to that one person. That's right. We are all individual. Also, we we'll talk about a little aggression. Um, you know, your teenager may get angry with you often and for reasons that are incomprehensible. They may become argumentative and talk back more than they did when they were kids. Like I hear Ken sometimes, you know, uh, he would try to think with his mother. But then I'll say, well, I'll say easily, watch your tone, Ken. You know what I'm saying? Watch your tone. Watch how you're talking. And so um, you, we have to we have to pick up these things when it starts. We don't let this yeah, thing run through. In the butt, yeah? In the butt. Listen, mm -hmm. you talk properly. You talk properly with your parents. You know, mm -hmm. respect is due. Mm -hmm. Understanding that anger is a normal human emotion, and it is common among teens. 
and you know what teenager will push their parents and they will try to do as much try to see as much as they can get away with mm -hmm. and um, you have to be steadfast as parents but if they don't um, channelize their anger properly it can lead to aggression and the result in behavior and one of the things that we as parent as parents I like to do is that when you're getting upset um, you know may not sometimes be the best thing best time to talk like you can redirect them and said listen to me it seems to me that you're upset um and i do this when i get patient who's upset who's who gets upset easily i say listen i can't um talk to you this time you're getting upset uh, i can't get the best out of you right, so right, take right. a minute take a couple minutes go pull yourself together and then absolutely, come speak to absolutely. me because That's if you a professional way into <coughs> yes yes, yes. Because if you're upset, then you can't hear really what I'm saying, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it can lead, as we said, to aggression and violence, which can be dangerous for them and others. Also, what I feel that as children growing up, we need to help them how to solve problems at home. So when they go to school and their friends... Um, do something that's wrong, something that irritates them, they will know exactly how to deal with this situation and not everything has to end up in violence, right? I think um, young people most of all need guidance <coughs> and inspiration. Many a times you might find a young person laid back and um, not making any progress or not showing any interest in wanting to progress from where they are to another level in life. Many a times, it's not that they don't want to, but it's the inability to move from point A to point B. And inspiration and guidance and nurturing is needed there. Self-esteem also. Mm -hmm. Maybe an individual wants to do this, but he feels himself, I don't have what it takes. Maybe a young person just needs a brace mm -hmm. or somebody to stand beside him and at least get him up on his feet and then he can move from there. And this plays its way in school, in work, and so many other things. And I'm saying that to um, say this. Um, find out what's going on. Communication again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, Find out what the person wants to do. Or where, where, where do you want to be in the next five months? Mm -hmm. And then you as the adult can now start brainstorming, okay... I know this person, I can talk to this person, I can get you integrated into this program. Mm -hmm. And so you, you help the person get up <coughs> on their feet while you're boosting their 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 um their their self-esteem. You're inspiring them all at the same time. And so uh, these are things that are crucially important at that age because sometimes teenagers might just be l l laid back and time wasted. Mm -hmm. It's something that you never, ever get. And, you know, I'm glad you say that about self-esteem because, you know, I, while I was at work today, I was saying, you know, probably I like to think beforehand and I'm thinking of next week's show, I should do um, something like, um, how do we help children with their self-esteem? Because there are so many people who think that they can do things. Also, um, to close up that about aggression, what I wanted to say, it is important that parents teach their, to know how to behave at home. Husband and wife, if you have to fight, and somebody asked me to talk about this too, if you are arguing and fighting, keep it in the bedroom. Because one of the things is that if your children see that you're fighting and beating each other in the living room, and this is what they're growing up to see, this is what they're going to be. They may want to start beat up their wife, their boyfriend, their girlfriend. Uh, and so this is not what you, you want to do. You want to fight and let the kids see how you solve your problem. Like, and, and you would be surprised. My son, Kevin, is uh, he just turned 12 years old. And he always said that, you know, I hope I get a good wife like, like my mother. And that we all could live like mom and dad together. So I know in my mind that they are paying attention. And sometimes we oh, think our children yeah. are not paying attention. Yeah, they they pay are attention. definitely paying attention. And how do we solve all this problem? After this, I'm going to give some shout outs. I know there's a lot to talk about. And I really want us to, to cover all these areas um, that we are talking about today. Solution parents often react to, to an angry shouting teen by shouting back. And we know that's not going to work. Avoid the ten temptation to be louder than your teen as i said sometimes i i, I make that mistake sometimes and i think not just <coughs> with with um teenager in any um verbal confrontation somebody needs to 
take the back burner and stay quiet because if two persons continue to escalate their tone, <coughs> mm-hmm. it, it can very well end in violence. Absolutely. So somebody needs to chill out and take the back burner. That's right. And that does not always get the desired result. In fact, your team may feel pushed to a corner and become even more aggressive when you try to dominate him or her. And that's when they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to verbalize their feelings or their thoughts. Uh, the only way to 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 do this is to be calm with your team when you're talking to them. Find a way to control your anger as a parent and listen to what your teenager is trying to tell you. Um, but I guess in Guyana, we didn't have this kind of option. But over here, you have all of that option, right? I'll tell you something, <coughs> and it's coming to my mind now. Growing up, in Guyana, I have, um, well, well, you have certain friends. I have five close friends, and we're like brothers. Mm-hmm. We live close like brothers to this blessed day that we talk every single day. Mm-hmm. And um, these guys, they grew up in a different part of Guyana. I don't know if you can, can remember by the Siwal area. Mm-hmm. And y- y- you will know it's a totally different culture over there. Mm-hmm. Totally different culture. They were raised differently, cultured differently, socialized and dif- differently, but we all became friends. I was able to nurture them and, again, we say shine them on, s- on all certain things, right? Mm-hmm. As to how this world really is. Today, they're grown young men. They, 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 they got their, their, their secondary education. Mm-hmm. Two of them are married. One of them actually um, is... Is because two of them actually are becoming fathers. They're scheduled to become fathers. I think this month or early next month. So I was talking to one of them and I was saying, listen, you're nervous or you're scared? Because it's first time. They're very young. <coughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're actually younger than me mm-hmm. in their early 20s. And he was like, oh, of course, he was scared, but now he's nervous. I'm like, listen, you don't have to. You have a job. Stay faithful right. and provide. As you move into fatherhood, you learn. And so it is good. I'm saying that to him. Say this, do you know how many troubles I saved them from? Mm-hmm. Not by going and plug them out of a fight, but because we had this atmosphere at my home where they shared every single thing. There is not <coughs> a thing under the sun that these guys do. It could be how wrong it is. Mm-hmm. And they open up to me. And I w- I, I'm able to talk to them. And so young people need to have that kind of space mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where they can share <coughs> all their um, things. One of the guy, well, one of my friends who, who got married um, about a year ago, and, and, and he, he's starting a father um, next month also. I can remember many a times he used to come by me and cry. Mm-hmm. I always got some girlfriend problem. Uh-huh. Right? Um, but, but, but it's good. Y- young people need to have a space where they can vent and where they can share, share share certain things because it's when you don't have an avenue to, to vent and everything is left bottled up mm-hmm. and then it begins to explode. That's that's when you, 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 you're going to find all these kind of um, a, a whole twisted deportment, uh, di- 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 different behavioral pattern, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. outbursts into violence and, and, and the whole works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so... You would know of, of spaces uh, available for young people here, whether it's in the home, mm-hmm. most importantly in the home, mm-hmm. or some positive space mm-hmm. for, 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 for young people to sit down and really talk and vent. That's right. And also, um, when with children, you want to sit down and, and let them, as you said, space, find a, a good space where you can talk to your children and talk to them in a calm way. You don't want them to... You don't want to shout at them. You don't. You, you want them to be able to to talk and you listen to what they're saying. Avoid any kind of argument as far as possible and let your teen vent out all their anger. Once they run out of things to say, guess what? They will calm down. Encourage them to talk to you when there is a problem instead of bottling up, as you just said. Teach them healthy ways to express anger rather than being able, um, being violent and aggressive. So we don't want our children to be any uh, aggressive. That's one of the things. We're going to save them a lot of problems. You know what was my medium back in Guyana? Because I obviously had my phase also. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we, yes. we are going to pass through that phase. Yes. It's incumbent during that teenage age. Uh, you, 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 you're going to face with certain things and you need to vent. For me, I was never out of a bicycle. Mm-hmm. I always liked riding. And so, and then I had my little 
um, iPod thing. So I would always listen to music. I would go ride. Thank God I was living like 10 minutes away from the seawall. I would go have a look at the sunset. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. was very tranquil and peaceful, very therapeutic. And I would go home calm as ever. <coughs> but not everyone has access to that kind of thing. Absolutely. You know, but um, <coughs> it is good to help a person to, to find a way where they can simmer down and be, become calm, whether it was by talking. But, but that was my personal way of dealing with stress, you know? Mm-hmm, Always mm-hmm. writing someplace, listening to, to some music. My mother would tell you, whenever they miss me, I'm at the seawall. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because my friends were from there also. But so you go, yeah. we always played cricket, especially in the afternoons. And then I always liked looking at the sunset and listening to the waves. And I always liked swimming also. Wow. So everyone has a different way in dealing with things. Right. That's just my personal way of how I dealt with stressful situations. And one of the good things is that we have to respect each other, how we deal with problems. Oh, definitely. Um, Terry C. Paul, thanks for watching. Tito Rambran Singh, thanks for watching. Maureen Ramcharan, thank you very much for watching. Vishal, thanks for watching. Um, v. Ram, thanks for watching. Mahadeo Jairam, thank you. Radha Samaru, thank you. Um, I see Priya is active here. Thank you very much. Awareness and responsibility is no joke. Pamela Edwards, thank you. Um, Bash Ibrahim, thank you. Shabana, thanks. Shabana Persad, Bru Ali, thank you. Dennis Mangal, Uma Suku, thank you very much. Imran, thanks for watching. Tara Singh, Sunita Nandalal, thanks for watching. Um, I, I saw Ma- Maria says communication is the key. Absolutely. Also, uh, Maria says she heard my parrot in the background. You know, I try during the show to let that parrot keep quiet, but sometimes he misbehaves. Um, <laughs> Rosemary Hakim, thank you very much. And you know, my parrot could have a good conversation um, with you guys, and he always say good morning and good afternoon to me. And Naz Ali says good afternoon, Mr. Kenneth Rambersad. Very interesting topic this evening. Continue doing a great job you are doing. Um, have a blessed evening and please be safe. And you know, I always say, and um, it's good to always hear good um, reviews from you guys, but without you guys, this show is nothing. And so I give you guys all the credit um, to do for this show. Um, without you guys, I am nothing, like I said. Kamraj, thank you. Sabita um, Jilal, thank you. Um, Amos is watching. Thank you, my sister Naomi Ramdas. Violet, um, thank you. Hima Singh, thank you. Um, Kamla Persaud, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let's see, Andrew, thank you for watching. Golin, thanks for watching. Uh, let's see, Mohammed Ishmael, thank you. Hey, how are you doing, Ishmael? I met this guy the other day at Home Depot, and I told him, I said, G- let me know that you were watching the show, <laughs> and here it is. Yeah, so, you big up, you, you probably might know him, he's from CI. So, big up my friend Mohammed A. Ishmael, thank you very much. Ganika Singh, watching all the way from um canada sharda Budu, thanks for watching ramlal thanks for watching he's from canada and i see he team up with your uncle they are all watching from canada so it's good to have different guys different people watching from different parts of the world there is still a lot of things that we need to talk about today so i will not play a lot of music i hope that it would not be boring for you guys another thing lying or hiding facts it can be devastating for parents to find out that their child has lied to them or has not revealed everything. The truth is their new sense of independence makes it seem unnecessary for them to tell you everything. Also, the fear of being judged and pushed many forces your teen to lie, um, which could become a compulsive habit if not nip in the butt. I hate people who tell lies. And I always tell my boys, don't start telling lies to me. I from the time you start telling a lie, you have a problem. I have a trust issue with people. Mm-hmm. What's your take? Um, I did mention this <coughs> the last time I was here. I have tremendous respect for people, regardless of how heinous a truth is. And I did mention this. It takes something out of someone to tell you the truth when it's really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And I've always said this to all my friends. I, I respect you more than you tell the truth. Of course, especially if it's a bad situation Mm -hmm. and you're able to muster that courage to um, tell the truth. And definitely lying presents um, a trust issue. And um, trust once broken, it's hard to be regained. eh? Right, right, right. So um, (coughs) it's amazing what a simple lie can cause. Yes, and I I always tell my boys, please don't start telling me any kind of lie. Always Mm -hmm. tell me the truth. I think um, children need to be able to know 
how you handle the truth also. Imagine someone coming to you with the truth and you behave all crazy. Yes, yes. As an individual, you start beat them up. Yeah, an individual <laughs> would be scared to come to you with the truth. And can you blame them? No. If your approach to, to, to the truth it's horrible, mm -hmm. I would be scared to come to you with the truth. Absolutely. You know, I had a former supervisor. Um, he was a deputy permanent secretary. I felt so free to talk to this man about any single thing. Mm -hmm. He was the permanent secretary and he was a pastor also. I knew him since I was 11 <coughs> years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could have been scared of this man for life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I wasn't. I was so free to speak to him about any single thing. Wow, good. You know, and it, it, I, I was happy that, that the communication was there. What was there, <coughs> and he knows that I, I've never lied to him, and I will never lie to him. That's a good thing. And you guess know? what? You will and have his trust. And he trusted me in return. He trusted me in 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 in, in return. I was um, oh well, I shouldn't mention this, but back in Guyana, I I was trusted with so many projects, and to go off, I did a lot of projects with the UN, mm -hmm. and I did millions of dollars in 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 in, in, in projects with the, the UN there and every penny was accounted for mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. because of the trust and the honesty with, with which I executed my um, functions doors were opened yes as yes. a result so Absolutely. truth definitely um, brings um, truth definitely opens doors also parents need to know how to react to the truth because if your reaction is crazy do not expect the child to come to you with the truth and you cannot blame them they, they will simply fear mm -hmm. they will be scared to come to you with, with the truth so they have to know that your approach will be one of a position of understanding, of a position of empathy, of a position where you will in turn offer advice, scold mm -hmm. where it needs to be scolded because mm -hmm. I ain't going to do something and you being my father, you're going to hee 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 all the time. Mm -hmm. you, you, you need to approach situations with absolute understanding but with the seriousness also that a situation needs to be handled with. Yes, and we, we're going to ask our, um, our DJ to get a song ready. In the meantime, let me finish off this part here honesty is a trade that you should encourage your children to build on teach them to tell the truth by setting an example for them Absolutely. have an mm -hmm. open channel of communication with your kids which allows them to share anything and everything without hesitation when kids see their parents are truthful and honest about everything including their mistakes they will learn to do the same Absolutely. avoid being judgmental mm -hmm. and a lot of times we talk about judgmental and we don't we need to get, move away from stop judging people mm -hmm. if you point um out the flaws in everything and correct every mistake they made they may fear that you will never approve them and may stop sharing and communicating with you and there we go with um we're going to ask our dj to play a song for us ladies and gentlemen you are watching the ken ramper show halim hanif thanks for watching the ken ramper show and rajesh thanks for watching um, Shireen Mutu, thanks for watching. G1 Udaira, thanks for watching. Priya, thanks, yes. Uh, Mary Fable, thanks for watching. Joy, you're getting the song now, it's coming up. Um, Nas, thanks for watching. Um, Nayan Chunilal, watching all the way from Guyana. Uh, Rajesh, thanks for watching. And let's go, DJ.
are watching the Ken Rampersad Show here on Island Zone Radio and on Facebook Live. I am talking to a young man here, a brilliant young man, uh, Mr. Singh. Um, Anthony, thanks for tuning in, um, for joining me today in studio. Um, as I said earlier, I'm not playing a lot of music because there are so many, ta um, so many things to talk about. One of the things we're going to talk about, difficult teenager behavior, um, the difficulty teenager behavior are not harmful per se, but they can strive um, the relationship you have with your teen. Um, defying the rules and arguing teenagers are rebellious. They may not always want to do what you tell them to do and would want to see the extent to which they can defy you. When teenagers argue with you and refuse to obey the rules, do not push them away and like, act like a tyrant as it may make them more stubborn. They break more rules more often. They may refuse to do chores and talk back all the time. You know, um, one of the things, Anthony, I've always said, you know, we are, ad I mean, we are adults, but we have, I mean, if you're a teen and you're like 19, 18, and people ask you to do something, I don't see a lot of times why one should really tell you a million times to do one thing, you know yes, what I'm saying? That, that maturity should have already been there. You know, and because uh, um, in Guyana, by the time you're 17, 18, you're already in the workforce, and so <laughs> you 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 you're an adult already, right? Right. Um. So, with that kind of age, uh, a, a level of maturity should have already been there, and um, nobody should have been running behind you <laughs> for anything. I, I I started working. I started my first job two days after my 17th birthday. Wow. Yeah. And, and one of the other things that I get really bothered me sometimes with teenagers who are not motivated to do anything. Like, for example, you know, when I was growing up, although I failed my, all my exams in high school, I still wanted to be a nurse and I still wanted to do something in life. I didn't give up. And, and look at me today. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always tell people never give up on your dreams. Um, despite... You know, one of the good things that I always had inside of me is to be motivated to do well, to to do good in life. Because I, when I was watching around and I see people who, um, especially like now, I see people who are homeless and they're sleeping in the street. Like, I get that sense every day. I see people sleeping on, on 125th Street in Harlem. And I say to myself, I am so glad that I took life seriously Absolutely. and I'm living my yeah. dreams. You know what I'm saying? And I'm building a pathway to my boys mm -hmm. that they could be good human beings, right? I see it every day, and it strikes me even more when it's young people like myself. And um, I, 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 I am always caught at a place where I don't know if to feel empathy or I don't know if to be angered. Um, because of, I, 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 I heard a quote, and it says, you are the full sum of your decisions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but your last worst decision should not define you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, it is very mm -hmm. profound. Everything that I am today is a full sum of the decisions that I, that I made in life. Same here. While I was pondering upon the program today, I remember um, a friend that I have in Guyana. He's a bit older than, than I am. And when the first time he sat CXC, he failed. And he went again and he did it. He went to university, excelled. He was valedictorian, which mm. means he was a top student graduated yeah, from yeah. Um, the university. <clears throat> he studied in so many other different countries. Yeah, he has his bachelor's. I think he has two masters. Mm -hmm. On a day like today, he doesn't have to go and look for jobs. The jobs come looking for him. Wow, that's a good thing. I also remember myself, while I got my subjects, I wasn't the brightest person in school. I, I was always lagging behind. Mm -hmm. If I pass, I barely pass. Oh, really? And that is an absolute <laughs> truth. And it came from me not believing in the potential that I... Have, possess yeah. right mm -hmm. and the, the, the um, possession the, the, the potential that I have within me it's when I started university and I realized that this thing was in me all the while and that's when I started to take everything seriously and from mm -hmm. then to now I have not failed anything because I recognize um, sadly there wasn't anybody there to pluck that potential out of me mm -hmm. or to bring me into that realization I, I had to realize it on my own and I maintained it um, but sometimes <coughs> young people need <coughs> young people need somebody to 
pluck the potential and out we, of them. And we will get to that in just one minute. I want to say special hello to Kenneth Carasquillo. He's watching from Puerto Rico. He's a bird guy, and the first time I'm seeing he's watching my show. Mm -hmm. So all of you guys who's watching my show for the first time, I want to say thank you very much. And we'll continue that discussion. Teenagers are confused and need guidance. Why I, I, I bring this back, because we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We say teenagers are confused and need guidance to stay on the right path. They need limits to help them to stay in control. When you create rules, you also create limits to help them. Be clear about the rules, be it about how late they can stay out on a school night or what they are supposed to do at home. Make the consequences very clear. If they defy the rules, enforce them regardless of how trivial the issue may seem. Your teenager will know that you are serious about the rules and that will instill a sense of discipline in them you could not involve them in setting the rules you know i think that it's a good thing to do is to bring them in and help set the rules i do that with my sons um the rules and also the punishment this way they could cl um, clearly know that they are in for if they're out of control or out of bound remember that as teenagers get they're older already aware of what the punishment that's right there. it is normal for them to want more independence this part of them getting ready to leave home so try not to take their behavior personally and remember this is part of what they need to do so um yes we need to set boundaries with children mm -hmm. and we need to um set the limits and make sure uh, that if you set any rules with them they must comply with it and um, if there's any punishment, you go ahead and um, punish them because, well, guess what? They will feel that, you know what, it's just a plaything. And I do that sometimes. I set punishment, but I don't, um, I don't go through with it. And what's your take? It is absolutely true. If, if you can recall me saying earlier, um, because of the principles and um, the values, and I did mention the word boundary. Boundary speaks of limit, Right. And those <coughs> principles, those values, those limits that were established from since childhood days, they govern me to this blessed day. Yes, yes. In that I would go so far and no further. So young people will not see it. They will never see it. They, they will see the parent as being a tyrant, somebody who just wants to control them. But then you realize how much of value these principles are and how much they will benefit you as you move into adulthood and you become more mature. I thank God for the, for, for the um, principles and the limits and the boundaries because I live by them today. And they contribute a whole lot to the person that I am today also. Um, discipline is, is absolutely needed. I have a friend. He works here. And he can't save. Uh -huh. He takes home $800 a week. And if he works his double, that's $1,600 a week. Right, wow. And he's like, Steve, I can't save. Like, how could you not be able to save right. with all the money that you're working? Well, for, right, right. And he needs some guidance. The things, <laughs> the things that are inculcated. But when you look at his background, whenever you talk about his teenagers and what's not, fraught with delinquency. Wow. Fraught with delinquency, and so look, look at what is happening to him today. He mm -hmm. can't save. Yeah. Right, yeah. and so. If there's a way that a parent can really show that the things that I'm inculcating in you now, they will benefit you in the long run, in the long run, and they will go with you for life, it's good. Yes. The teenager will not see it that way. I'm telling you, when we were disciplined as young people and as children, you wonder if these people mad. <laughs> Yes, you know, yes. because you know the form of this is when you get some good legs growing up. Right. Also, right? drastic change in kids. Um, when your children come home, um, they dress up differently. Or like my son, I see the, the different hairstyle and all these things, right? You know the deal. Um, they come with their fine pants, different than Guyana. You know, Guyana got bell bottom. Here they have those fine slim pants to wear. You know, um, what's your take on, you know, we're gonna, we, we have a limited time to talk now. So we're going to cut a lot of things short. Of course, I mean, they spend more time out there than they do in here. Most of their waking hours are in school or in colleges or, or wherever they socialize. Um, so every person wants to fit in somehow. So if the wear is a certain way, they will want to. The and status quo might influence um, factors also. Also, in Guyana, and I guess everywhere, once you see the haircut start going a little neat and a yeah. different way of dressing... 
you yeah. know, girlfriend probably that's somewhere or yes, there's a crush yes, somewhere, what's yes. that? So <laughs> it has to be interesting being a parent of a teenager. It has to bring some joy and some curiosity. I can imagine having a son on them days coming yeah. where you see an fancy hairstyle coming yeah, in. Yeah, I see my two. Or um, going on yeah. somewhere. <coughs> it, it, it would cause your um, my mind to wonder and then you would reflect, oh, I remember my days. Exactly. It so. has to be exciting for a parent. Yeah, Kevin Kevin does the same thing with all the fancy hairstyle and Kevin, when mm. they go to the barber, they oh, well, say I what hairstyle they want. Yeah, they do he their own He actually met me on the road after. He told um, me. To, to, he's like, hey, and I turned around I was like, oh, this man recognize my face yes <laughs> yes also when they come with these things the most important thing you can do as a parent is accept them as they are and help them to do the same teach them to embrace who they are and who they are going to turn out to be and how they look this will help them deal with the pressure of looking cool mm -hmm. and hot um <laughs> I, I i don't agree with the hairstyle they have the, the, the whole side shave out and the top has long hair i don't like that but guess what they're doing what they want to do. I'm allowing them to do that. Getting your teenagers to dress like the way you want them to, um, you know, it's it's next to the impossible. But uh, instead of rejecting their choices outright, try to indicate nicely, you know, what is cool and what is not cool, and give them a better option rather Certain than tell them they can't. Certain um, dressing is absolutely important also because. You will see some people will, will dress a certain way and it speaks volume right off the bat. I mean, um, it's good to start coaching your, your, your child with a dress shirt here or a tie there mm -hmm. or, or something. I like my, my hoodies and stuff, but if I am to walk into the UN, I can't walk in like this. Mm -hmm. I'm representing an entire nation. I, I need to be properly attired also. So, you know, in, in, in inculcating these very basic hygiene kind of thing is good also. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you will find some teenagers, oh, sometimes they really don't care. Their room is a mess. Mm -hmm. You got to nag, you gotta nag, nag on them to take a shower or, mm -hmm. or all kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, pretty different phase altogether for both child and parent. Also, we know that um, decrease in teenager, they don't want to talk to you too much. Your teenager is not talking to you as much um, as mm -hmm. you want them to talk to you. Uh, but the thing about it is that um, did you talk much to your parents when you were younger? No, you didn't. Probably not. Um, so people want to talk to their um, friends much more and it's not a reasonable task for teenager. So um, one of the best things that we can do is if you are force your teenager to tell you everything one of the things that's not going to happen they will not be telling you everything right they will talk to their friends much more than they will talk to you right absolutely i should talk about sexual things and so on of course and again it boils down <coughs> to an established um channel of communication that needs to be pre-existing um for them to feel free to come and talk that's to right also um emphasize that you would like them to know exactly what's going on in their life only because you love them and that you care for them and you want to make sure that they are happy so try not to fight with them or argue with them too much know that it's a normal thing for them to really talk to their friend about some most things also we want you to know that you should be talking to them in love right and um in moments when they are feeling down acknowledge it and offer them support this can be enough to help them put words to do what is um, good for them. So always, no matter whatever you do, let your children them know, the, uh, assure them that no matter what, I love you. And when you go to your friends, them let let them know that you know, daddy love you, or mommy love you. Um, also, the, the, the you mentioned that they will judge you by your action because you could be very well saying, oh, I'm only doing this because I love you and I care, and your actions speak something totally mm -hmm. different. Your your words and your actions they should complement each other. It reinforces and it really solidifies the the, 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 the trust and, uh, and the approach mechanism that they might come to you with. And, uh, uh, allow mm -hmm. both to complement each other. Your words coupled with your action. Also, you, you know, your friends, they will have your, your sons or your daughters. They may have friends. And one of the important things you want to do as parents to know who your friends, who your children friends are. It's a good thing to do. Oh, that there is crucially <coughs> important, uh, of, of um, crucial importance. It is extremely important um, knowing the kind of friends that your child hangs out with. It kind of sets the tone mm -hmm. as to where your child is going to go. It would allow you to understand where the behavior is coming from. Mm -hmm. And if you see the kind of activities that the child's friend is involved in, it will be safe to assume, not criticizing or blaming, mm -hmm. but assuming 
that your child may be involved in this or sooner or later for he to continue on the same trajectory with the same friends could very well be involved in the same kind of activities absolutely so it is very key yes it yes is very key um, um, in, and if this happened, the solution is to you may not like your teenager's friends because um, of their appearance or because of their attitude. If the appearance, remember, right, that um, you can't judge a book by its cover. <coughs> you right, see a right. friend, but uh, as a parent, you want to make sure that your, fr your, your children are following good friends, that they of have course, good of friends. You, 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 you <coughs> need to know what they're involved in. Mm -hmm. That's right. And gently share your concern in a non-judgmental way um, while telling your teenager that you trust them to make the right decision. And you probably you could you could talk more about it. Um, let your friends them let your children know that you know what you can have whatever your friend your friends you want to have, but you know what have good friends. And I trust all your judgment that you will choose good friends. Well, a parent needs to know how they raise their own child because I can tell you from my own experience, I know the kind of friends that I have in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're involved in all sorts of things. But I know how my parents raised me and with what principles, and they're well ingrained within me. Mm -hmm. And those principles, like I said, allowed me to say no, a form no, many, many times. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, a parent needs to be, um, they need to be assured in the work that they've done as a parent and raising their child, whether or not the way you raise this, this child whether he'll succumb or whether he's bold enough to stand out and say yes and or no. Yeah, and you know, they said um, when you're a teen, it's often you're indecisive, um, indecisiveness, confused mm -hmm. uh, because of the physical and emotional changes of course. they are going through, whether it's something as simple as to wear, uh, what to wear to school or sometimes um, something as important as which college to pick. Um, you want to help your child in that kind of thing, especially Absolutely. choosing a college. Parental in in intervention is definitely needed, um, especially in the area. I would definitely, when I get my child, especially in the area of college and education and what's not, because I can speak from um, that background, to, to nurture and guide in, in, in um, that area. <coughs> um, unfortunately, our, our parents weren't, they, 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 they went along with what we... Um, with what we told them, mm -hmm. what we want to um, do. Like, and I wanted to do this, but I wanted to do that. All right, then. Yes, and also the solution, um, you know, teenage is the right time to introduce decision-making skills. Teach them different ways in which an option can be evaluated or gauged to make the right choice. Make sure that you do not in any way put them down or laugh at them for making a simple, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. stupid choice. If you offer too much advice, they can end up making the wrong choice just to be defined or prove that they make the right decision. And, you know, Anthony, one of the things that I always like to do is to give my children um, and anyone, especially in this house, to give them option. I don't want to answer all the questions for them. I want to see how good they are and um, to make decisions. And, and you have them because I always say to myself that, you know, a lot of times we are not there for them to make decisions. So give them that time and space to make decisions for themselves, okay. right? It's interesting because those were the exact words I was about to um, say to you. But go ahead and tell. Right? Um, <coughs> let them evaluate and let them tell you what the pros and cons will be. Right. And they themselves will be able to make the right decision. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, even if you see that they're going in the wrong way, you can always as you know, tell them in a nice and gentle way. Let, listen, if you, like, for example, I was going to tell you that Kevin didn't want to go to the school, which is about... Um, just half a block from my house. He mm -hmm. wanted to go to a different school. And I tell him, I said, listen, you are go it's best you go to the school right next to me because guess what? I will save a lot of money from, um, for, for you. Mm -hmm. And um, your brother is going there. He can always look out for you. Rather than you want to go far away, I have to pay money and so on. And so he decided that he's going to go to the school next to us. Right, right. And the good thing is that he loved the school now. Right. So always give children options of things that they can do. Right? Um, typical they don't teenagers. Restrict them and, and, and really limit them in that sense. Why, why limitations are good. Mm -hmm. you, you have to know where to impose limits and where not to. Right. You don't want to make all your decisions for your, um, for your kids because at the end when they marry or they get a husband and wife, then the other person um, will be making all the decisions for yeah, them. Yeah, children are smart these days. They, 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 they're very rational. And they're able to figure things out. Yeah, yeah, man. And this is America too, you know, especially in the United States. Typical teenager girl behavior problems. Um, and I, I will talk, we'll just talk off um, 
the record. You know, a lot of times I see a lot of Guyanese girls um, come here and their parents working hard and they get so carried away with guys while the parents at work, the guys got a nice car, they come pick them up, take them out, they get pregnant and all these things. And there was one instance where I see this girl, um, her parents, good parents, working hard, and she has a car and this guy that she got, he's doing drugs, he's taking all her money, he's doing her, but I could not really tell this girl anything because, um, you know, uh, uh, confidentiality issues. So one has to be very careful, watch your children, know who they are dating and, and so on, okay? Um, also, with boys tend to repress their feelings. We know that men don't like to talk too much. Um, they're shy, and, and they think sometimes it's a sign of weakness. Do you right, think so? Right. Um, yeah, and, and it <coughs> springs, again, from the social construct and what, so, what society defines as masculinity. The worst thing you can trample upon for a man is his masculinity. And right. so he would try as much to live up to the defined parameters of masculinity, which is very distorted. So... I mean, we, we were raised in an environment where showing emotions, we're um, doing certain things, whether you cry, whether you talk about stuff, it comes as a form of we as weakness or it doesn't really um, reflect you as a man. So, um, again, thank God the, the, the world is moving away from that kind of mentality and that kind of social construct. And more and more you find guys are, you know, they're more in touch with that they're an emotional being, they're a biological person. It's good to share your emotions, it's good to share your feelings, it's good to share your thoughts and all that kind of thing. Yes, we have um, nine minutes more to go and we'll be very short. Um, we're going to be so short today um, with this last segment. Create a trusting relationship, an open relationship with your children. Um, always help them, to, um, help them to, to talk to you. Have that relationship where your children can come to you and nobody else. Also, we talk about em empathy. Mm -hmm. You want um, to show empathy with your children, to listen to them in a non-judgmental way. Yeah. Right? Empathy is basically <coughs> the ability to put yourself in someone's shoe. Like right. I, you, you come say something to me, I, I, I can relate to what you're saying. I try to feel right. your emotion and everything. Also, respect your children and, um, and lead by example. Um, respect their personality, ideas, opinions, and emotion. Also, as we said earlier, do not trivialize their um, things that they do. If they come to you with something, listen to them. And always listen to your children and offer help when possible. And when you, you see you, you, you have your children, you want to be there for your children rather than you, you let them go somewhere. Um, and, and you have your parents, anything happen, you'd want to go to your children, uh, your, your parents first before um, you go to anybody else outside. Because one, know that, you know, your parents will always have your back no matter wherever you go. Also, you want to let your children know that you love them and that you care for them, that no matter what happened, um, you will be right there for them. So um, I think we did beautiful. Um, we are doing good with time. So... Um, Anthony, again, I want to say thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you I'm so me. glad. I mean, we, we beat a lot of time to get all that we want to say. We'll get to say hello to some of the hello to some of our viewers here now. So let's go. Let, let me say hello to any viewers. You can always say hello to any of you, the viewers you know. Um, uh, we want to say thanks to um, DJ Bolt for playing our songs today and for being patient, Vish Vishal. Ram Narain, thank you very much. And Priya said, while some parents are educated, wise, and know where to seek help, on the other hand, some parents are not absolutely. Radha Tota Ram, thank you very much for watching. And to my very good friend, um, Razia Hussein, thanks for watching. And she said hello to you. Chuck hello. Wayne hello, Farmer, thank you very much. Um, he's watching. Thanks, um, Razia, for watching. Kausila Prasad, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let's see. Sabi, thanks for watching. Dilo Prasad, thank you. Devi. Rambara, thanks for watching. Rada, again, thank you. Um, Gobin, thank you. My good friend, Debbie Sanyasi. And good to have Maria um, watching our show. And yes, Maria, that part is something else sometimes. Uh, but he always say good morning. I have an African gray in my um, living room. He talks everything. Good morning, good afternoon. And he would ask, what happened to these boys? Where is Ken and Kevin and all these things? You know, Pulo, thank you very much. Lalva Chen, thank you very much. In fact, to be honest with you, when I wake up in the morning and I come downstairs, my power, the first person would say good morning to me. And when I come in the door at night, sometimes he says good night. Sometimes you get a little confused. Also, uh, it's always good to have Neela Pawaru 
um, tune in. Let's see what she said. Remember, parents have to adopt. We are raising our children in different times That's from awesome. when we are raised. So change, um, changing times, changing parenting uh, method. And thank you very much. Also, Neela is a very brilliant woman, so she knows exactly what she's doing. And I always congratulate her because she is trying out there to save lives. Um, she in suicide prevention. Carol Roman, thank you very much. Um, Indira Nandalal, thank you. Ria Rojas, um, Ramjas, thank you very much. Leah Khan, Guavaman, thanks for yes, thank you, um, Guavaman. I boy, I was gonna call you yesterday and I forgot. So Guavaman, thank you very much um, for tuning in. It's good to have you on, but we have to have a conversation one day. Uh, I hope soon. Um, Priya says, absolutely, as parents need to get the act together because you have to practice what is preached. Um, let's see. Gaura Persaud, thank you very much. Shelly Singh, thanks for watching. It's Allison, thank you very much. Isaac Ragnott, thank you. Jen, thank you very much. Um, let's go for a song. Dean, thank you very much. Samantha Suklal, thank you very much. Shama Ram Ramlal, thank you. Um, Joy Ramburan, um, Shairoon. Hussein, thank you. Bibit, thank you very much. Ram Kisun, thank you. My good friend, um, John Numat. And guys, Paul Ratnas, thank you very much. I want to say hello to all of you guys. Anita Ram Kisun, Ram Kar, Patrick Deoda, thank you very much. Um, Shamir, thanks so much. Guys, if I did not, Mutu, thank you very much. If I did not call your name, please excuse me. Um, you could always tune in back next week. I just want you guys to know that I really appreciate you watching my show sharing the page to your friends and your family it was a great discussion let's go with a beautiful song stop what you're doing and curl i don't have no money she tell me don't worry Halim, thank you very much for watching rajesh thanks for watching I say she only want me for one thing I don't have no money She tell me don't worry She don't want a house or a wedding She does only call me for one Sanjish, thing. thanks for watching I say she only want me for one thing Thank you very much for um, Anthony, thanks for very much for your words of wisdom Please come again I may have him next week Stop to talk about um, How do we have so uh, it's something that we can talk about. Let's focus on uh, children, how we can help children um, next week. So I will talk to him after the show. Sorry to put him on the spot. Sabi, thanks for watching. Dalo Prasad. Devi, thank you. I hope that you guys find the topic very interesting today. But I think it was a need uh, in our community to talk. To, you know, the more we know about children, um, our children, it's better for us and for them. So we have two minutes more to go, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say thank you very much for watching the Ken Rampersad Show here on Island Zone Radio and on Facebook Live. Um, I want to take this opportunity to say thanks to all of you um, for watching the show tonight. And please join me next week. Um, also, try to be good parents. And <clears throat> You know, one of the things is, um, Anthony, I, I always aspire to be a good son. Um, that is my goal. That's in my DNA. I want to be good, and I so I'm so sorry that my mother is not here to, um, so that I can give some love to her. You know, um, any final thoughts? You any final take you want to say? Well, definitely. <coughs> um, parents need to be cognizant of the the fact that times are different, and like your um, viewer said, the par parenting methods might be different. Uh, they will be different, actually. Also, lead by example and ensure that the things that you say complement your actions. 
That's right. And always aspire for to be good as we know that life is so unpredictable. We don't know if we're going to live tomorrow. So you know what? Uh, when you die, your children, you can leave some good memories for your kids to sit down and talk about and um, be there for your kids. Those are your kids and your children. And children, be respectful to your parents. Uh, be kind to your parents. You know, they went through so many things for, to bring you in this world. And so together, you you know, could have a great relationship. And I always enjoy a great relationship when my two boys and me sit down to have a good conversation with each other. Um, by the way, Ken, I love the haircut. Yes, I did. I cut my hair yesterday to go to the wake, um, to the funeral of DJ Frontline. You know, I have to keep the hair sharp sometime and to be here. I want to be a great guy for you guys and an example to all of you. And so um, I see John says, thank you very much. It's always good to have John from Suriname here. And so now it's 7 o'clock, so take it easy and have a very pleasant evening, everyone. And have a good night. Um, be kind to each other again. And today, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next week, okay?